Hello and welcome back for another episode of the Accessible Technology Podcast where you get to hear all about the everyday technology that is accessible for disabled people as well as what technology isn't accessible and where you also get to hear tech tips that I would give to tech companies on how they can start making their technology more accessible for the disabled community. This episode would have been out a day dinner, but only someone fell asleep halfway through editing it. But anyway, my name is Faith, and all of the episodes that you hear on this podcast are recorded from my point of view, which is the point of view of someone who is paralysed from the neck down and can therefore only move her head and uses a stylus in her mouth as well as a chopstick to get around everyday technology. So if accessible technology is something that you think you are interested in, please consider following the podcast and sharing it, and also looking into my website where I blog about everyday technology and how it can become more accessible, as well as the YouTube channel I have. This podcast is available to listen to on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, and Spotify. However, if you'd like to support the podcast and the content I produce in other ways, you can also support it by going over to the Thieves now buy me a coffee page, which is where you will also be able to find exclusive episodes that aren't part of the podcast, as well as checking out a shop that I plan to open at some stage. In this episode, however, you're going to be hearing my review of the third generation iPad Pro, which I originally uploaded as a video to YouTube on the 19th of December 2019, a couple of months after getting it. As always, there's a link to the original video on my YouTube channel below if you would like to check it out. But now, as always with most of the episodes that you get to hear on this, let me please give you a couple of additional notes about the product that is being covered. So the first generation iPad Pro was released by Apple on November the 7th, 2018. And it was the first iPad to use Face ID to unlock devices. As of 2023, you can buy the 2018 iPad Pro for £470 on some online marketplaces, with some prices going lower, but others still going up to 742 points while others are available for 699 points which is a lot cheaper than other versions of more up-to-date iPads and going back to the first of this iPad it was also the first iPad to be given a USB-C port But now that I've gone through all of that, let's get straight into this episode. The new iPad Pro is one of the newest editions of iPad and has 
been sold as the best so far. Coming with a bigger screen, it's also the first to use the home button and comes with Face ID, which can be used in portrait and landscape mode. Many of the side buttons have been renamed, taken off and made smaller, and there is no headphone jack, which means you will have to use wireless headphones or earpods. The internal microphone is now a whole lot louder, but with the bigger screen, this iPad has also got a lot more lighter. The A12 Bionic chip makes it incredibly smart and perfect to use with AR and other types of immersive gaming. The neural engine runs 5 trillion operations per second, making it possible for you to even edit in Photoshop. To get a wand in your iPad Pro, you use the same gestures you would use if you are on an iPhone and you can change these in the settings if you have any difficulties accessing all of them. If you have an Apple Pencil or a fan of it, you can now charge it by attaching it magnetically to the side. And you can also get a folio smart keyboard kit for whichever side of iPad you settle on. But I don't have the of these, instead choosing to settle on other types. The charger for the new iPad Pro is USB-C, meaning you can plug it into a digital camera your phone or anything else that also supports that type of connection. The new iPad Pro has two cameras equipped with Smart HDR. These include a 12MP camera for stunning photos, 4K video, document scanning etc. And you also get a true depth camera portrait mode and access to FaceTime, Animoji and Memoji. I got this iPad so I could do digital art easier and to have other ways to photo edit. Like what I said about the iPhone X, the new iPad Pro was hard to get into, especially as someone who was updating from the iPad Air. But since I got used to it and found out how to add accessibility shortcuts, I've loved everything about it. My only criticism is how you have to use two fingers to zoom into illustrations or to turn them round. So I would like options for rotate and zoom to be added into the accessibility settings. The new iPad Pro can be bought with an 11 or 12.9 inch display, but what size you get makes no difference to how it works. At the time I got it, it cost between 769 to 969 points before you add in storage. But this could be different at different times of the year. Whether or not you should update it depends on what you'll be using it for. But if you're not using it for creative reasons or for other work, I would suggest you stick with a different model altogether. I will give the new iPad Pro of 2019 five stars. But enough about my thoughts. What did you think about the iPad Pro for generation? Did you buy it? And if you did, are you still using it now? If you are using it now, what do you like or dislike about it?
And are you still thinking of keeping yours if it still gets the job done? Or are you thinking of upgrading to one of the new M1 or M2 models? And why is that? It's only now when I watched my original review of this iPad back again that I noticed I mentioned the wrong year of release when recording it and said 2019 instead of 2018 but all I can say is you know what it's like when you're a student just out of college and your brain is slightly all over the place but personally as someone who is only creating a few websites, recording and editing videos, editing photos, writing a book, and working on documents and doing content, it still works extremely well. And even when I edit in Luma Fusion and record and edit podcasts in Ferrite, it still works extremely well. Yes, I would like to maybe rent some of the new iPads to check out how they allow you to create stuff and to check out a couple of the new things that they give you. But honestly, the 2018 version, as far as I know, is still getting a couple of those apps just in a less powerful version and if it works why would you change it but who knows my judgments might be wrong and if you think that i am wrong or if you think that you agree with me you can include your thoughts send a review wherever you're listening to this on whether that is on apple podcasts amazon music audible and spotify as well as via the contact pages over on my feeds now tech reviews site that you can find by searching for www.pltechreviews.co.uk or on my other website, phoebelow.com. If you're interested in watching the videos that I have done on accessible technology before, you can find more of them over on my PL Tech Reviews YouTube channel. And if you would also like to check out a couple of my film, TV, theatre reviews and political videos, you can see all of them by searching for my Phoebe Snow Journalism YouTube channel. You can also follow my other podcast, the Phoebe Snow Podcast, by searching for it on all of the same destinations as you can listen to this podcast on. However, if commenting on a website or a video isn't something you would be up to, you can also support the podcast by going over to the Peeps Slow Buy Me A Coffee page where you will have the option to give me a one-time donation or to check out other bits of exclusive content that won't be part of the actual podcast as well as checking out various other things that I plan to upload in a store version at some point in the future. Or of course you can support me by going over to any of my socials 
for the next episode that comes out is going to be a review of one of the many keyboard cases you can get for the third generation iPad Pro or the 2018 version iPad Pro, depending on what you want to call it. And that will then be followed by a review of some styluses that I've bought, followed by my thoughts on the first version of Apple at Harkid, and finally followed by a podcast version of my first New Year special from 2019, going into 2020, where I do a 10-year recap of technology throughout the years, covering all of the ways that technology changed from 2009 to 2019-20. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so by following at Now. And if you would also like to check out my Instagram, you can follow that by searching for at the real Phoebe's now. If you have a WordPress account or blog, you can follow my PL Tech Review site by searching for PL Tech Reviews dot and hitting follow. But of course, there is also the uh, Buy Me a Coffee page. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Bye!